Man, the Yankees keep winning these series, and they've won now five in a row. But there is so much going on with the Yankees right now. It's almost hard to, like, really appreciate the fact that they have made this sort of push here after things were looking very bleak for them earlier in the season. And again, they drop a series finale, win the series, but drop the finale to the Baltimore Orioles. Yesterday was just a crusher. I mean, Jordan Montgomery gets staked to a four-run lead in the first inning and hands it right back. I mean, the Baltimore Orioles came alive yesterday to just sort of send the Yankees out of town on a little bit of a sour note. And it's like you have to remind yourself that the Yankees are winning these series because, like, when it happened with the Houston Astros in the last game of the series, you know, they they lose. Tampa Bay now with the Orioles. It's just like that one little, like, oh, man, like sort of your shoulders kind of go down, like, what the heck? Um, Jordan Montgomery was not good, Um, and the bullpen was shaky this weekend, which is something that we're not used to seeing with this New York Yankees team. Oh, on top of that, now you get some injuries that are starting to play into things. Aaron Hicks now going on the I.L. with the wrist issue with the torn sheath in his wrist. So we'll see what happens there. Is he going to need surgery? Is rest just going to be enough? To be honest, I mean, Hicks was just starting to come on anyway, and it obviously shuffles things around. And the Yankees outfield, Ryan LaMare. I mean, this guy looked like, I know he's a former second-round pick. He looked like he took a left turn and ended up becoming the starting center fielder for the Yankees yesterday. Like, this has all of a sudden become kind of an issue. And what's crazy, too, is when Giancarlo Stanton doesn't play over the weekend because of the quad, then you have Aaron Judge, who's taking some of those DHs. You realize kind of how quickly outfield depth really gets tested here. And so... You know, not to mention the Yankees get another positive COVID test from someone in the traveling party. So that brings them up to nine. Thankfully, that person is asymptomatic. I mean, they have been stretched so thin here in terms of behind the scenes. It's amazing they keep winning these series, Moose, because they are being tested like at every single turn. Yeah, they are. But they've won they've won five straight series in in spite of all that, Maggie. And yeah, the the inability to finish off these sweeps. You mentioned Astros, Tampa, uh, you know, the Nats, they lost the first game of that series or whether we, what we saw this past weekend down in Baltimore against the Orioles and it's just kind of a familiar tone with the Yankees when they're battling injuries and you're seeing other guys step in and we'll see what happens with Hicks and uh and now you're obviously dealing with the the tourist stuff and Nine people within the Yankees organization testing positive for COVID-19. Um, and it's great that, you know, their uh, majority of them are asymptomatic, which is fantastic. But yeah. uh, still having to deal with that and having to deal with uh, more than just the distraction personnel not being there. And they've won games. Yeah, yesterday was disappointing. I mean, Montgomery expected a better performance. I mean, his last pitcher performance was really good. He had the nine strikeouts, six innings of work down in Tampa against the Rays. And you thought, all right, well, the Yankees getting healthy on the Baltimore Orioles down in Camden Yards, something that they're very, very familiar with doing. And then you get the game that they got yesterday where um, inability to finish off the sweep, uh, a lot of things didn't go right. Uh, Montgomery didn't pitch particularly well, and and now you're dealing with all the injuries. So we'll see with that, you know, the torn sheath in the wrist of Aaron Hicks, whether or not, you know, he can respond um, without having surgery. If he has surgery, you know, Hicks is going to be gone, um, which is going to hurt that team defensively and what they try and do. You heard why uh, from Boone over the weekend why they did not call up Estevan Floreal. Uh, with the Hicks news. Um, so it's been a lot of rotating pieces with this team early on in this season, and um, they're still winning series. So that's the most important thing, right? Still continue to win series. And they've dealt – it's an organization, even though some of the personnel is different right now, Maggie, but as a group, it wasn't that long ago, 2019, where they had the historic number of guys that went on IL during the course of that year, and they still have had a very, very successful regular season. Yeah, I should I – should correct myself the bullpen was really leaky yesterday they were good in the other two games you know the pitching was really uneven from the starters like Domingo Herman was great Kluber uh okay I mean after he had turned in a great performance in his last time out it was like you know okay eh. and then Jordan Montgomery was eh. so you know you kind of got two eh, and one yeah got all that Um, But yesterday you had Sessa giving up runs and you had Peralta giving up runs. And so that was, you know, we're used to this Yankee bullpen kind of being lights out here and you got some leaks yesterday. So tough way to end the series. And, you know, it it doesn't (laughs) like 
thank goodness for Gio Urshela. Like, what a huge home run that was on Friday. At least yes. if we can go back to the first game of that series where the Yankees give up the uh, give up the lead, and then here he comes, I mean, with the bad knee and everything, and comes up and hits a pinch hit three-run home run. I mean, wow. And you saw Luke Voigt getting it going a little bit. Obviously, Aaron Judge with the four home runs over the weekend. It's been, it, you know, offensively, Baltimore is fantastic for you. But I don't know if anyone can say they're feeling, like, amazing leaving Baltimore right now. Thankfully, you're going to Texas, and they're not that great. But, like, no one can say they're feeling great because of all this other stuff that just seems like it's swirling around the Yankees. So, you know, not being negative here, like, they are definitely, you know, it's great. They're only two games out of first, trailing the Boston Red Sox, and I do believe that once they get to first, they probably won't relinquish that. Um, but, you know, you can't say that, you know, you're, you'd be, you know, no concerns whatsoever when you're looking at some of the injuries here and where they are to key pieces to this Yankee team. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, no doubt. And I would say, I know you said Montgomery. Eh, I, I yeah, Montgomery. I mean, you've got to down go. downgrade that to a yeah. Point. I would say it was bad. I mean, three innings of work. You have a four nothing lead. Then you have a five two lead after the Judge Homer Maggie and um, and then you implode in that third inning. I know he didn't get tagged with the loss. Mike King did, but I mean, get three innings from your starter after what he he gave you in his previous start against Tampa Bay. I thought Montgomery was bad. Um, which is, I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen. He's a bottom part of the rotation starter. I, I, I felt really good. Obviously, how could you not after that top half of the first inning? Frazier, Red Thunder, going, th- you know, going deep. You like to see that, and and then you get the result. What you got? And it was, you know, Sessa wasn't good. Uh, Peralta wasn't good. Mike King wasn't good. So, but their starter also went three innings. I mean, he threw seventy, you know, seventy plus pitches and in three innings of work by Jordan Montgomery. I mean, he was just. But once you take two good, one bad, isn't that kind yeah, of yeah? Like no, I'll take where it. You just was bad. With Montgomery. Right, I, I get it. I, I get it. it was but bad, I mean, there were a lot of people around the Yankees coming into the year that looked at Montgomery as a guy that could pitch out pitch where he was in the rotation. That Definitely. thought he had a, a really high ceiling to him, that he figured it out and loved his approach up at the plate uh, on the mound, uh, loved his approach as a pitcher and thought there was a good ceiling to him. He was just bad yesterday. And you're, it's going to happen when you have a guy that's your fourth or fifth starter on the team. You know That, that is going to transpire. That's going to happen. I thought maybe Montgomery was taking a couple steps forward. I thought early on when they have that lead, I felt really good until I started to watch Jordan Montgomery pitch. Then all of a sudden, I didn't feel so well, good. Well, you know it's bad when you're staked to a four-run lead, but then they get, he gives up two runs in the net in the bottom half of the yeah, inning. Yeah, doesn't you're make just it like, stick. Yeah, it's like, oh well, that well now that doesn't feel awesome. Like it's they basically they're back now. They're back now. It's a baseball game. Um, so you have that with the Yankees, and again, it's really nice to be able to have Garrett Cole going on a Monday after you lose that series finale, and now here comes Garrett Cole, and you feel like you you know you have your ace of ace of ace, and you can rely on him to get this series started off in a really great way. So, you know, good for the Yankees, and then there's the Mets. I mean, oh, dumpster man. fire in Tampa. I mean, they just won seven in a row, so I can't get, like, so crazy incensed by a three-game sweep. It's going to happen. It's just that was bad, man, bad to watch. And what's funny is that it started actually kind of great. Like, David Peterson comes out on Friday Day Moose, and he was absolutely dealing. Like, I love being able to watch that from Peterson. But i got to be honest, like, for Luis Rojas, you've got a guy in his second year in Major League Baseball – He's going into the eighth inning. You don't want to get anyone up just in case. You know, you have a guy who's going to be, I, I get it, his pitch count was low. He was being very efficient. But he goes into the eighth inning, he gets into trouble, and you didn't have Trevor May ready to go. And I know you don't want to dry hump a guy or whatever, but you didn't have Trevor May ready to go, and that definitely was an issue for the Mets, and they coughed up the lead and then obviously lost on the, on the, on the, the walk-off from Phillips. So that was a bummer. And then... You know, Saturday you get totally gassed and just totally blown out. And then yesterday, to be honest, like, not the best effort. And I, I'm sorry, like, you know, we, we were giving them some praise about how the, you know, the, you know, starting a, an opener and then putting a bulk guy behind it and how that was, you know, having some success. No, 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 no not really. Not really, and Joey Lucchese is as I have no confidence in him whatsoever, especially after what an inning and a third, 
and it was just ugly. Ugly from the from the Mets bullpen this entire weekend after they had been very good. And I hate to say it because I don't want to be one of those people, and I'm a fan of Lindor, and I'm rooting for Lindor, and, and I realize that he's with us now for a long time. But when you have Michael Conforto and Jeff McNeil both leave a game, right? So we don't know what's going to happen with both of those guys. Whether Conforto's going to need an IL stint, what's going to happen with Jeff McNeil, how bad is that hamstring? Your team is struggling right now. We talk about the bench mob, and the bench mob is great, but now we're going down to, like, the third string guys. Even the bench mob is taking hits. This is really a time for Lindor here. Taiwan Walker tonight, and hopefully he gets a, has a really good outing like last time and doesn't have one of those bad innings where he doesn't find the strike zone and all of a sudden things go haywire. Kind of really need a lot from Lindor here over these next two series. Like, is that too much to ask? I know he hit the home run. I know that he's been hitting a lot more lately. Tough couple defensive plays over the weekend in Tampa, but I know that's a weird stadium and everything. Going to really need your big priced, big ticket item yeah. guy to kind of really put his stamp here on these next two series because this is what superstars are supposed to do, right? They're supposed to help lift the team when you're dealing with not just injuries. Obviously, DeGrom was a big one, but now you're looking at Conforto, McNeil, Nimmo, J.D. Davis, I think, is going to be coming back, but can you expect him to go right, you know, full bore? you got a lot of injuries with this Mets team. It's Lindor time right now. Yeah, don't – now the question is Willie. You know, uh, back to – I'll get to Lindor here in just a second. But Friday night, I, I didn't have an issue with him sticking with Peterson Rojas, that is, um, beginning at eighth. I thought once he gives up the home run, you got to get him out of the game. So I would have I would have had somebody – warmed up and I know it's kind of against what baseball does now with the analytics and the spin rate and everything his pitch count was low with Peterson he was absolutely dealing but I I would not have kept him in to allow him to give up the double and then get him out of the game and then you go to the reliever like I I would have I would have given him a little bit of leash in that bottom in that eighth inning Maggie but um, because I think he had thrown the ball all you know so well and it earned it now to Lindor but he was caught unprepared yeah, you know, I know. They well, were that's where. Yeah, I would have. Was yeah, falling apart. No doubt, he fell apart really, really quick. So I, I don't. I would have had some. I agree with you. I would have had somebody warmed up, but I would not have uh, taken him out or said, "Oh, you know what? You did your job." I would have given him an opportunity because I think he had pitched that well. Goes against kind of the mindset in today's day and age of Major League Baseball. But I didn't mind it from Rojas. The mistake is not having somebody prepped and ready to go. You know, to to the Lindor question, Maggie, it is um, Willie. I mean, yeah, it's Francis. It's been Lindor time a lot this year, and Francisco Lindor has, has not uh, has not given it to you. You know, he's got the the new green hair and everything down there in Tampa. The the Mets had an embarrassing series against the Rays, and it was a you know cataclysmic amount of 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 things that went wrong. Whether it be Friday night and the gut wrenching loss to you know get embarrassed at times during the course of this series. So now they're dealing with a lot of injuries. Now they're dealing with a lot of guys out of that lineup. So. You know, if if you're looking for Lindor to be that guy, yeah. I mean, that's why you pay him ten years three hundred and forty one million dollars to step up and, and to be a um you know, a, a point of, of impact in that lineup. Now the question is, okay, yeah, for sure. He should be. The question is Willie. I mean that that's it. I mean they're gonna need him, no doubt. He needs to step up, he needs to be there offensively, he needs to be there defensively with the contract that he had earned and uh, you know was given to him by Steve Cohen and Sandy Alderson, now will it be a guy that that understands what he needs to do starting now, moving forward here and be what he needs to be offensively and in the field as well? It's just interesting when like you know the guy shows up and he's got like the neon green hair. It's like oh I know what you did on your off day. <laughs> yeah. Who do you do? You doing that in your own hotel room? You go to a salon for that? I mean, I think he, that's a salon, right? Yeah, Are you sure they they carry that color? You, know, you can't you show ahead. up. You got to call ahead. I, I think, think you're you right. Ahead. I actually think that people who are so rich like that, I think the person's coming to the hotel room. They could. I be think doing when you're that, that well. when you're that rich, I think you, that's one of those things. Talk about like personal chefs and stuff like that. Like the things that you indulge in when you get super super rich. I don't think you ever go to a hair salon again if you're super rich. 